Hey guys, Shahid here with another quick video outlining the calculations you'll see on the general chemistry portion of the exam. This is something that tends to stress students out because they think that since they're not given a calculator, they'll have to spend valuable time manually performing calculations. But trust me guys, this should be the least of your worries. So I'm gonna quickly show you guys the types of questions you'll get and how to quickly perform calculations. All right, so let's get into it. On the exam, whenever you're faced with questions that involve calculations, the answer options will always be presented in one of two ways. The first is formula-based. This is when you're simply asked to find out how the values should be plugged into the formula. With these types of questions, there are no calculations necessary. And guess what? Most calculation-based questions on the exam are of this type. So already you should be feeling pretty comfortable with this. Now, the second way answer uh, options of calculation-based questions can be presented is integer-based. So this is when you actually have to do some math to arrive at a final value. But don't worry, whenever these types of questions come along, the values are generally easy to work with. They aren't going to give you dirty numbers as I like to call them, such as 37 or 3.8. Instead, they'll give you a value like 12 or 15.5. Now you can easily do basic calculations with these values and you certainly should be comfortable doing so. But you can also use simple rounding techniques to make yourself even more efficient uh, if you come across some calculations that are harder to do. So let's go through an example. All right, so uh, calcium chromate is a yellow solid with a solubility product constant of 7.1 times 10 to the negative four. Determine the equilibrium constant and whether a precipitate would form when an aqueous solution contains 26 moles per liter of calcium ions and 29 moles per liter of uh, chromate ions. Okay, so for this question, we just have to calculate the equilibrium constant and see whether or not it is higher or lower than the solubility product uh, constant that we're given in the question. So you guys should all know how we calculate equilibrium constants. It's the multiple of the product concentrations divided by the multiple of the reactant concentrations. So in this case, all we gotta do is multiply 29 with 26. Now, these aren't the worst numbers to deal with, but they also aren't the easiest. So I'm actually going to round 29 to 30, and I'll round 26 down to 25. So instead of having to multiply 29 by 26, now we can just simply uh, multiply 30 by 25. Now it's super simple because we can just drop the zero from 30 uh, and multiply 25 by three, which we all should know is 75. And then we tack on the zero again to get 750. And before we can compare it to the solubility product constant given in the question, we simply convert this value into scientific notation, which will just be 7.5 times 10 to the 2. And since the value we calculated for our solution is greater than the value given, we know that this reaction will proceed in the reverse uh, direction and calcium chromate will precipitate. And that's it. Just like that, we're able to turn a nasty calculation into an easy one. The best part about this is that the option choices on the exam are friendly to this technique meaning you can feel confident that you will still arrive at the correct answer. All right, guys, that's it for this one. I hope it was helpful. And if you're interested in learning more tips and tricks that will allow you to answer questions efficiently and accurately, check out our crash courses, which will provide insight into any section of the exam. Thanks for watching and see you next time.